Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at how the integral actually finds the area under the curve. Now, one thing that happens a lot in Methods 3-4 is that students make errors because they don't understand what's going on in the background and how the area is actually being found. So I'm going to talk you through basically what's going on in the background of an integral. So basically we start out with our curve. This is going to be my curve f of x. And so basically, an estimation technique we use to find the area is, I guess, using rectangles. So we use the height of the curve to be the height of our rectangle. And we assign a width, which we'll call x. So we draw a rectangle across, which is going to have width x, and starts at the height of the curve. So as we can see straight away, a limitation to this estimation technique is that there's quite a large margin of error. This whole region inside here is an error, even under here. And so we need to think of a way to overcome this, to get around this margin of error. So one way, one technique that's used is by, I guess, decreasing the width of these rectangles. So what would, what would happen if we were to make them half the width? So what we can hopefully see happening is that our margin for error is decreasing. Although it may not be as prominent yet, it is in fact getting smaller and smaller. So what I guess we can draw from this is that at the, as the width of our rectangles decrease, the accuracy of our estimation increases. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called in maths an infinitesimal. An infinitesimal is a value which is so small we can basically disregard. So what we're going to say is we're going to assign the width of our rectangles to be this infinitesimal value, which means that it's going to be so small our rectangles are barely, barely wide. Okay? It's basically going to be a straight line. And so if we had a bunch of straight lines, we're going to see that there's going to be little to no error in our estimation because we're basically going to take into account every part of the curve. So how mathematically we're going to show this in an equation is that we're going to say the area of one of these rectangles is going to be the height, f of x, times the width of the rectangle, which is going to be our delta x. And so what delta x represents is a very, very small value, okay, our infinitesimal. That's what delta means, a very small value. And so basically the area of our curve is going to be the sum of all these rectangles. And so we use this sigma. This sigma, if any of you guys do physics, you would, I guess, know this from net force, but this sigma represents the summing of all our values. And so what that's saying is we're going to sum all the areas of our rectangles together. Now that's basically our integral. However, it's not in a form that I guess you're more familiar with. So what we can do is rewrite it this way. So we use our integral sign, which is pretty much the same thing as sigma. And then we put a dx at the end. So that is what the integral sign means. The integral sign is sigma, and it means the sum of all. And our dx at the end, well, that's not just there for convention. It's there because that's the width of our rectangles. So basically, this video was about how to find the area under the curve, how we actually do it, what's going on in the background of the integral. So hopefully, you can use this understanding to avoid making any errors in your exams and SACs. And so hopefully, this helps. Thank you. Thank you.